Welcome to part three of understanding the values of the Agile Manifesto. The Agile Manifesto contains four values, and essentially the authors are saying that while there is value in the things on the right, you should prefer the things on the left. We've talked about two of these values, so if you haven't watched those videos, be sure to check them out. But it's now time to talk about the third. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. In other words, that you should prefer customers and collaboration over negotiating contracts. Let's get into it. So I, for one, find that there are many overlaps between these values of the Agile Manifesto. So I, I don't at all blame you if you think that most of them sound very much alike. I think there actually is a lot of overlap. But the way I interpret this point, I interpret this to mean not that you should not have contracts, not that you should not write contracts with your clients or sign contracts with your clients, but rather that you should think very carefully about the nature of the things that you do put into the contract. So what are the type of things that you do put into the contract? So classically, I guess it's a question of trying to get the right things in the contract, as in trying to get the right uh, requirements into the contract so that you can enforce them regardless of what end of the development you're on, whether you're the client or whether you're the developer. But I think this point is saying that it's less about the contents. When you put requirements into the contract, it's almost always wrong. So it's, it's better to simply not put requirements into the contract. Again, regardless of which side of the software development you're on, I can't blame you if you want to have sort of smart goals, sort of measurable goals that you can measure during the course of your system development. Of course, the Scrum burden down chart is, is one of these metrics that can be used. But really, I don't blame you if you want something more concrete. So I'm saying this in order to emphasize that I'm not saying that you can't put measurable things into the contract. You can't put goals into the contract. Of course you can. To my mind, it makes sense to have measurable goals in the contract so that you can gauge uh, during the course of the project whether your project seems to be a success or not. But how to construct these measurements is a whole different topic, so let's talk about that some other time. I just have to do some serious thinking in that end, but I, I think there, there's really some interesting stuff there that needs to be figured out. It, it's probably entirely possible to have really good goals that you can check on during the course of a software development project. But let's talk about that some other time. For now, let's just stick to the idea that if you put requirements, as in functional and sometimes even non-functional requirements, into your contracts, it's quite likely that, that the requirements that you're putting in there will turn out to be insufficient or incorrect or unsuitable. <clears throat> but you weren't able to see this from the start. Nobody were, was able to see this from the start because we didn't have enough information. So as more information comes in, we're able to figure out what requirements are good and which are not. So it's back to that idea of E-type, P-type and S-type systems that I keep talking about all the time. If you haven't watched my other video on that topic, be sure to check out that other video. But essentially, if you have customers, then you're probably developing what we call an E-type system. And an E-type system is fundamental fundamentally subject to change. And if it's fundamentally subject to change, then, I mean, it makes sense to expect that you won't be able to pinpoint all of the requirements at day one, because it's subject to change. Because A, you may misunderstand the requirements, and B, your environment in which you operate may change over time. So this should strongly indicate to you that you should not try to pinpoint all of the requirements at day one. But let's get back to the value. So the value is saying customers and collaboration over contract negotiation. So it's essentially saying that resistance is futile, right? So it's essentially saying that the person who knows your requirements, the person who really knows what needs to be built, as in really knows the underlying problem, not, know, not necessarily knows the technical details or exactly what the solution should look like, but the person who understands, who deeply understands the underlying business problem that you're trying to address, the underlying need that you're trying to address. This person is your customer. These people are your customers. But the problem is that they don't know exactly what they want from day one. Because again, E-type systems, they couldn't possibly know because it's difficult to figure out. It's difficult to, to specify an E-type system from day one. So instead, you need to trust that over time, they will figure out what it is that they want, what product it is that they want. And here's where the value becomes very relevant. If that's the case, if the case is that they are the only people who know, who will know what you need to build, who, who really understands the underlying need, then they are the people who will set the requirements for the application. But if they won't be able to specify all of those needs at day one, then that means that you're going to need the customer throughout the project. You're going to need information from the customer throughout the project because they will step by step as time progresses, figure out what it is they actually need. And hence the saying, 
customers and collaboration over contract negotiation. You can't put everything into the contract from the beginning because the people who have the information don't know the information yet. So instead, you should collaborate with the people who know the information so that when they do figure it out, you have a communication channel where you can funnel the new requirements, the new incoming requirements into the application. So in order to drill this in one last time, it's unfair to your customer, right? You're doing your customer a disservice if you're trying to force your client, force your customer to, ah, oh, sorry, I've sloppily used the words clients and customers. Uh, I usually mean client when I say customer, pardon. You're doing your client a disservice when you're trying to force your client to specify every detail of the system that they want to have built because they probably don't know yet. And as usual, that's not their fault. It's just that such is the nature of E-type systems. So to really serve your client, you need to collaborate with the customer rather than negotiate every detail of what they think they want to have built into a contract. This will only give everyone involved a false sense of security. That's it. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe so that you won't miss my video on the fourth value of the Agile Manifesto. I'll see you in the next one.